Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hey, everyone. This is Molly McPherson, and you're listening to a raw, unedited cut of the Indestructible PR Podcast. Now, you know me as your crisis communication strategist. Perhaps you know me from this podcast, TikTok. Perhaps you're coming here because you just read about me in last week's Boston Globe, Behind the Paywall. So that means you're a subscriber. No matter how you got here, welcome to the podcast. This is a different type of an episode because this, I'll call it a transition episode. We just finished uh, the fourth season, starting the fifth season of the Indestructible PR podcast. Cannot believe that I've been doing this for five years. At this point, I am transitioning into a new format. When I started this podcast five years ago, my avatar, if you will, really speaking to people who I was, you know, working with, you know, my client base, people I was either working with as a client or as a trainer or as a public speaker, CEOs, small business leaders, you know, presidents, business owners, uh, directors, uh, also communicators, you know, people who were just looking for, you know, the latest tips and usually a podcast episode was structured around something that I wanted to learn more about or if there was someone I wanted to talk to. So it was really a a podcast based on the function of communication, public relations, uh, crisis communication, crisis management. Um, I also, you know, spoke about media training and public speaking, interviewed a lot of people. You can go back to episode number one, not that I would encourage you to do that because uh, (laughs) you'll notice so a lot of changes. Uh, One, like the name of the podcast for one, you know, just the production quality, the value, the, (laughs) the, just all of it. Okay. But uh, I'm not going to poo poo myself uh, by any means because considering the schedule that I have and the work that I do, the fact that I can come out with a weekly podcast um, is incredible. And as a matter of fact, the, First time I've ever missed a week, and in this case, it was intentional. But I have been I have been publishing every week for five over five years straight. Uh, but I just intentionally didn't put one up uh, the week of Christmas. Uh, you know, the week of the Christmas holiday, didn't want to. You know, I just wanted to you know leave it there. And it was a good episode. It was with David McAlpin, and he is you know former. Uh, broadcast producer, television producer. We were talking about media relations. I'm actually going to have him uh, speak, uh, you know, with my Patreon members as well and PR Confidential uh, coming up soon. But, you know, the the podcast has tra- transitioned significantly, you know, in these five years. Uh, I now am changing if you have been listening. I mean, particularly if you're an OG listener, uh, like the Sean's out there, the Allen's out there, like, you know, you know who you are. You've been listening and supporting me this entire time. But for all the people who have been listening this other time, you you just noticed that I've had like a slight, uh, you know, transition. And a lot of that has to do with TikTok. You know, TikTok definitely, you know, changed mm, how I approach my business, not the business that I do. The business that I do is the exact same, but what I'm known for has changed. Now, this episode is about the unforgettable celebrity scandals of 2023. Essentially, I'm doing a year in review. I am taking a look at the top five episodes of the year, determined by who? Me? No, you. Determined by the amount of downloads. So this would be the top five episodes of the year. So I just want to release what those are. And when you hear these episodes, you're going to get a sense of why I am tweaking my format. A lot more people obviously are coming to this podcast now because of TikTok. I do know, you know, based on people who I talk to uh, and feedback that I get is that people just assume that I'm now like a celebrity gossip content creator. Nothing can be further from the truth. I mean, yes, I I do bring that in, uh, but I use it more as a device. I use what is happening in culture. So whether it's popular, celebrity, entertainment, political, breaking news, anything that people are talking about. And where I happen to see it in the, in, on the news, in the newspaper or on social media, I'm going to bring it into a TikTok because if there is a communication lesson to be learned from that, I want to pull something out of it. In 2024, I'm, I'm working on a lot of things. I'm going to be doing more public speaking. I'm also writing a second book and, you know, this one is going to be a good one. You know, this is what I really do. And that is getting into more of the behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, just, 
bringing people behind the curtain so they can see how PR, public relations and publicity um, is deployed, you know, how people manage a crisis, you know, particularly in, in communication terms. I love spotting that. You know, I've been, I'm in a place now where I can do that. You know, I'm a seasoned communicator. I'm a seasoned crisis communicator. I've been in this business for years. I've been in, I've worked in media. I've worked in journalism. I've worked as a reporter. I've worked as a producer. I've been a public affairs, you know, public information officer, a PIO, PAO. And also I've worked really, even though I don't really wear this hat, but I've also worked as a publicist. So I've done proactive PR. Um, I've worked in Washington, D.C. I've worked for the federal government. You know, I've done a lot of things. Why? Because I'm old. I've lived. Um, but with all that, I just want to like give it all back and tell people, you know, what I've learned and and kind of share it. So, you know, some people will say I am – or not say, but more accused, like, oh, you're just part of the people who are the puppet masters out there. And no, it's like, I'm not the puppet master. No, I'm standing on the side of the curtain. So I see the puppet master. I see the strings. I see the manipulation, but I'm also talking to the audience and I'm pointing it out. Those are the strings. Okay, you don't see the puppet master, but let me tell you what the puppet master is doing. Let me tell you why the puppet master is doing what the puppet master is doing. And if anyone really is paying attention to my work, like really paying attention to my work, you'll know that it's not just PR. It's not just public relations. It's human relations because PR is just HR. <laughs> it's public relations is human relations. That's what I'm always looking for is why people do what they do. And that's what makes crisis communication so fun. And really, it gets into the reason why these five episodes are – the top episodes of the year, you know, the top downloads of the year. Now, okay, also scientifically, we just have to, like, if you're running the numbers here, clearly it's going to be my last episodes because my podcast has been growing a lot significantly in the last year. My goodness, the numbers are incredible uh, how quickly, you know, the downloads are coming. So, you know, I, I just... It's definitely weighted. I mean, obviously, it's going to be, you know, the last ones, you know, of the year. But my podcast provider, you know, gives you a roundup, you know, just like if you follow, if you use Spotify or YouTube music, you know, they do kind of a roundup of all the things that you listen to. Uh, my podcast provider does the same thing. So I did find out where my top five episodes are, and I want to share them with you because you all, dear listener, uh, were a part of that. Um, but before that, Wanted to let you know um, some other stats uh, that came out of um, from my provider that one, um, I've been doing one episode per week for the past five years. <laughs> the first time that I did not have an episode was last week because it was the Christmas holiday. I didn't want to do it. I, I just, I didn't want to put anything over the holiday. Uh, and I left the last episode. It was with uh, David McAlpin and it was about, um, you know, media relations. Yeah, he was a former producer national uh, television producer. So we talked about media and what, and how to be, you know, a media spokesperson. Um, but starting now, you know, with this episode, this is just a raw, you know, more uncut episode um, as I transition out of my one format that I've been using for a while with the music and, and uh, in the format that I was using and I'm tweaking the format. I'm not changing it because I didn't like it. I loved it. Uh, my original producer who helped me put that together was Scott Wild, uh, someone very near and dear to me. I uh, helped come up with the music and the whole format that I was using. And it was perfect for that time. And it was perfect for the many years that uh, I used it like that. Uh, I would take one topic and I would go deep, deep, deep into that one topic. But now with, um, you know, just frankly, the lack of patience that people have, <laughs> you know, whether they're watching television, streaming, uh, you know, whatever it is. People do not have time to sit to listen to someone ramble on and on and on and on on a podcast unless it's a really compelling interview or if there's a high production value. I, people don't need to hear me for 45 minutes. You know, I, there may be times when that happens. Maybe it's in an interview. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to like tighten these podcasts to keep them tighter and, but to keep them richer. You know, it's, it's going to be more like a TikTok plus. Whereas my Patreon, my PR confidential, uh, with Molly McPherson. You'll find that on Patreon. That's more of the off the record, Molly. So that's like a TikTok plus, but I also have professional tiers there. So if you're interested in PR comms, whether you're someone who wants to get into the industry or you're already in the industry, I have different tiers. And my top tier, professional annual, 
um, tier. If you want consulting, you get monthly consulting. So just sign up for an annual membership, which when I tell you is a fraction of the price of my consulting that you would pay for, uh, and you get it, uh, you get it monthly and you can just sign up, you know, whenever you want, you get the link and you can sign up. I had two last week back to back and the incredible thing, they were both like similar industries going through a similar thing. It was crazy. And that's what I find is that so many people are going through the same problems. Uh, there just happen to be, you know, in different people, different industries, sometimes the same industry, but it's just fascinating. I love what I do, but more than loving what I do, I love when I help someone when I'm doing what I do for a living. All right. Top cities. Also not that surprising. <laughs> you heard the top media markets um, in the US, though this one isn't, but number five is DC, uh, where I used to live. I used to live right outside of it, a um, couple minutes outside of DC in Alexandria, Virginia, an old town. That's my uh, fifth top uh, market for downloads. Number four, Toronto. I have a lot of friends in Toronto. Uh, a lot of my uh, classmates, my roommate, uh, when I went to Boston University, Toronto. Uh, and I've had, I've had guests from Toronto, a number of guests. And so all of you, uh, my Canadians, my uh, listeners to the North, I thank you so much. Uh, number three, Chicago. I would love to give credit to my daughter, uh, Kate, who goes to school there um, at a Jesuit uh, university there. Um, and all her friends, I'm sure, listening, not. Uh, but all my Chicago listeners, thank you. You're number three. Number two would be the market that most people think I'm uh, broadcasting from. They all, so many people, like I'm starting to, which is weird, uh, at least for me, I'm meeting people kind of out in the wild now. Like people are starting to kind of recognize me and kind of come up and, hey, are you, blah, 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 blah. And they're always shocked to see me when they see me on the East Coast uh, or in an airport. They're very surprised to see me and they're very surprised to learn where I live uh, because they all tend to say, I thought you lived in Los Angeles. Um, and that's because I'm talking about celebrities. Although I, I do work in the entertainment space and I do work with entertainment clients, definitely. Um, I happen to see one uh, recently on television. I was like, wow, I didn't even know they were doing that. Like, that's crazy. Uh, so I was, and I was also like quite happy because I thought, ooh, that plan worked out. So congratulations for them. Uh, but uh, I do know a lot of people uh, who work there and work in the entertainment, but I am not like physically located there. But that's my number two market and my number one market, NYC. NYC. Annie. Love the musical. Uh, love that song. New York City, number one market. Not a surprise, but love all my listeners there. I'm there all the time as well. All right. And my podcast provider was so nice to tell me that my podcast in the top 5% of um, podcasts in um, from their platform, top country, not surprised, United States, and then Canada, United Kingdom, Australia. Australia, not surprising. I mean, it's big, obviously, but I do morning television there a lot. Number five is Ireland. Don't know why. Uh, could be because I have an Irish last name. Maybe people assume that I'm in Dublin, uh, but that would be number five. But to all of you, thank you. Uh, for all the listeners, whether you're in that top five market or not, love having you here. All right. Top five episodes of the year. This is the roundup for 2023. And the reason why I'm also giving a little bit of a tweak to the format, what you're going to see coming up um, in 2024, uh, slowly, uh, I'm going to be working with a new uh, producer. Uh, we're going to be increasing the production element of the podcast. Uh, also, I'm not going to be doing just one deep dive on something. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a deeper dive, kind of like a TikTok plus, but you're, we're always going to get the lessons though. We're still this is still a communication slash PR slash crisis communication podcast. I mean, that is what this podcast is. So if you work in comms, you know someone who works in comms, you feel free to recommend the podcast. That's what I do. Or if you're a business owner, small business owner, you're an influencer, uh, you know, someone who needs to communicate with stakeholders, I'm talking to you as well. I mean, you are going to be a part of, you know, you are an avatar as well because I want to give people insight into how they can manage their reputation. Um, but the device that I use is popular culture. You know, what's happening in culture, politics, 
uh, news, breaking news. Yes, celebrity. Yes, entertainment. But it's really what people are talking about, these kind of universal everyday water cooler slash bubbler type stories that you've heard about, these trending stories. I'm extracting the lesson, the PR lesson. I want to bring you behind the scenes, you know, show you the strings, show you what the puppet master is doing because that's why people follow me. You know, that's what they're interested in. That's where I get all the comments, you know, on on TikTok and Instagram every single day. And I can't do a post. I cannot do a post for all of them, but I can talk about them more on the podcast. Uh, so I'm going to do, you know, one deeper topic and then I'm going to do my news dumps. They won't be Friday news dumps um, unless you listen on a Friday, but I'm just going to, you know, kind of hit some of the top things that are happening and answer the questions that are in the DMs, you know, on my social media. So at least I can talk to people about that. All right. The number five episode for the year was episode 271. That's 2023's biggest public relations fiascos, a year in review. This is an episode uh, I brought in two of my favorite people uh, who work in the crisis management media training space. That's Warren Weeks, one of the best media trainers out there. He's out of Toronto, Weeks Media, and then also John Piernak. Those two are buddies. John, uh, also in Toronto, is uh, more in a, and I say this in a very positive way, he's like a PR crisis management kind of nerdy, but in a really good way because he looks at things analytically. He researches them um, extensively. He's really good. He works at a firm, you know, out of Toronto where they work with clients, you know, on communication strategy and crisis management. I brought them in. I asked both of them to come with their top uh, PR crises of, you know, the year. So here's just a taste of what we were talking about. Here's Warren Weeks. So I'm going to start by attacking the house of the mouse. I'm going after Disney. And this kind of hurts me because I love the Disney stories and watched them as a kid and read the stories to my daughters. But from a business perspective, and a lot of people are like, oh, my God, what's the crisis? This isn't a moment in time. But to me, it's a bit of a process. And over the last several years, the Disney company has been in a bit of a downward spiral. And a lot of <laughs> I got a lot of comments on this episode um, because, you know, we peeled back the layers on a number of scandals that were there. You know, also we talked about, you know, Sports Illustrated, you know, how they kind of created a reporter out of AI whole cloth. Um, also talked about the indigenous claims made by singer Buffy St. Marie. Uh, we talked about Sheen. We talked about Israel. John Piernak talked about, uh, Piernak talked about Israel. I got a lot of comments on that, you know, on, on Twitter or uh, you know, some people agreed with what he said. Some people did not. Um, but you can definitely check out that episode in the show notes. But it's a fun episode. All right. So number four, it's episode 269, The Fine Line Between Apology and Denial, a case study of Colleen Ballinger and Matt Reif. The reason why I combined those two is I did two TikToks. Um, this was around Thanksgiving. And I noticed that they had used a strategy um, in their apology. And that strategy was the non-apology. Both of them, I think, kind of successfully uh, dodged a huge crisis by not even apologizing for it, which I, which is kind of a unique take, isn't it? You know, people are always looking at me. You know, I people come to me thinking what I, what I do is I just break down apologies. So it was kind of fun to break down a non-apology. Uh, it stems from the Matt Reif piece, at least, a comedian, got a lot of popularity on TikTok, um, stemming from this joke, which was kind of leaked out there a Netflix comedy special. Take a look in the response. Take a listen. I've only been to Baltimore one time. I ate lunch there and the hostess who like seats you at the restaurant had a black eye. <laughs> a full black eye. And it wasn't like, what happened? Yeah, it was pretty obvious what happened. And we couldn't get over the fact that we we're like, this is the face of the company? Like this is, this is where you have greeting people? And my boy who I was with was like, yeah, I feel bad for her, man. I feel like they should... You know, put her in the kitchen or something where nobody, where nobody has to see her face, you know? And I was like, yeah, but I feel like if she could cook, she wouldn't have that black eye. So it was that joke uh, that kicked off the Matt Reif uh, public relations crisis that I wanted to analyze. And I brought in the Colleen Ballinger piece because she did, you know, the, the same, you know, this 
basically the same take. So what I talked about was the importance of understanding your audiences, your stakeholders during a crisis, and, you know, the potential harm when you trivialize issues, you know, with insensitivity or humor like Matt Reif, uh, and how, you know, showing sincerity or a lack of sincerity definitely has an impact uh, on how you come out of that crisis. All right, number three. No surprise that these two people would be on this list, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, episode 268, dissecting the PR relationship rumors. This was my definitive take, which was also could be titled, oh my gosh, I am so sick of explaining what a PR beneficial relationship is um, in the realm of Travis and Kelsey, Travis, I'm sorry, and Taylor. Uh, you know, I, you know, so many people on TikTok, uh, re, you know, reached out to me, you know, about these two and I've talked about them, I would say somewhat extensively. Uh, and I'm known as someone who says, yes, it is a PR relationship, but yes, you can still be, you can have a relationship, you can still be in love with someone and still have a mutually beneficial relationship. Um, you know, what is the description of one? You know, it's, it's really, if you can highlight brand enhancements, you know, by being with a person, it's PR. So if you're a, a singer and one's a football player, uh, and you, and he works for the NFL or his team's part of the NFL and the NFL gets, um, a brand enhancement. My God, if you watch football, which, oh, uh, the other day, football the other day was just like a nightmare. I mean, just starting the Patriots, it's impossible to watch the Patriots. But then that night watching the Vikings and the Packers and like, oh my God, Vikings fans, it's like watching it in the seventies and eighties. It's just, oh. So frustrating. But all the clips, if anything comes out the Chiefs, it's always Travis Kelsey. You always see it. That's PR. It's not to say that they're not together, but that's what I did in this episode is I really kind of just, it was like, listen, Swifties, <laughs> you're coming at me. Let me explain what's going on here. And we can all be in agreement on that. So I also talked about, you know, just other celebrity relationships, but also, you know, how you can even have a PR relationship with someone, you know, your partner, your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, whatever it is, you, you both can have brand enhancements, you know, being with each other enhances your brand, you know, and, you know, it's being complimentary. It's the same concept. It's the same concept. And in some cases it can be your jobs, like both of your jobs enhance each other. Uh, I, I was having this conversation you know, with my significant other just today, you know, on a walk. And we were talking about that, how what I do can help him in something that he's doing and how what he does has helped me in what I do. It's mutually beneficial, you know, so, you know, think about it. It's, it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. You know, that's why PR is a good thing. That's why the word beneficial, it's all good. It's all good. Um, but also coming up in my uh, format tweak, um, I'm bringing on someone. I've already recorded one episode. It's going to be coming out uh, soon. Uh, but it's going to be like a new series that I'm doing. And the next one that we're going to do is Taylor and Travis. It's going to be so good. So you'll want to uh, stick around for that one. All right. Uh, number two. Episode 248, back to Colleen Ballinger. This one was a huge episode. Uh, when Colleen Ballinger was first having her whole toxic train, ukulele, uh, Michigas, mishmash mess, uh, I did a YouTube live and I did a podcast. And oh my gosh, the numbers of people who are following along on this. Uh, I mean, my, my TikTok became monetized simply because of a live that I did. So many people were on that live. Uh, so I did a breakdown. Uh, the name of the title is Colleen Ballinger Miranda Sings behind the headlines of this PR crisis. And I really talked about, you know, she had this kind of unique ukulele protest song, uh, explaining why, you know, she was singing why she should not have been canceled. Uh, but, you know, I talked about, you know, just her brand and her following and her base and, and what went wrong. You know, she had claims of grooming and this predatory behavior. Which, and with extensive, you know, media coverage, I mean, certainly, you know, on social media, it really, really affected her career negatively. Uh, and so many people were following along on this one. If there was really like a person who truly defined like what I do in my job, it was Colleen Ballinger. Uh, so you can check out that episode in the show notes as well. All right. My number one sh download of the year. Um, I mean, not only was it your favorite, 
by downloads, it was my favorite because I had so much fun. But this episode, oh my goodness, leaps and bounds the number one downloaded episode of mine. And that's episode 267, Blind Gossip PR Trick or Truth with guest TikTok's Cal Marissa Roth, whom I love. I absolutely love her to death. We had so much fun. Just, just here's a taste of how it all began. Kyle Marissa Roth, who I call KMR. I am so excited to speak with you on this podcast. I I think I'm excited too, yes. Okay, full disclosure though, you and I have been talking for about, I don't know, 90 minutes now? (laughs) We've already done the podcast. (laughs) Hi, Molly. We we literally just gave each other deep dives on each other's love lives, so. I know. We know everything about each other now. I know Molly's oh my gosh. Now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. What we've established is Molly likes men. Right? Yeah, Molly yes. likes men. <laughs> Kyle usually does not. Sometimes she does. <laughs> Molly didn't know that I was queer, which is just. I didn't. That's a revelation. That me. is a revelation. But that, you know, I respect that about you, that you were just so focused on <laughs> what was coming out of my mouth that you didn't even think about whether or not I liked uh... girls. <laughs> To get a sense of where we were going there. <laughs> but we discussed um, public relations, strategies, publicity, but also blind gossip. And a lot of people dismiss what it is. And if you don't know what it is here, just take a listen. And actually, before you do that, define what blind gossip is. I get asked that question all the time. Uh, a blind item. So that's the other thing is people are like, what percentage of your blind items are true? I'm like, the point is, is that I put a thing on the top and I write blind item underneath. So you guys know that a blind item is an unconfirmed piece of gossip. Okay, period. That's it. Okay. It's like yeah. literally, and it means that the person that the subject that it's about has not said, yes, this is true. Yes, this is, it's basically, you know what I mean? And then usually also the blind item is that it doesn't reveal the person, but I have been reading these for so long that duh. And then also, some are so obvious. And I, and I also get them direct from sources and they'll say like, it's this person. It's like, no shit, it's this person. You know what I mean? To the person who doesn't see the shit 3000 times a day, every day, they would have an... <laughs> it's, it's used in different in realms too. It's no different if you work for like you're at the state Capitol and you want to drop a dime on the other party and you know something. So you're going to go to a political report and you're going to drop something. It's no different. You know, it's like a blind item. If you don't put your name, if it's anonymous, then it's a blind item. But if it's, if your name's behind it now, it's just, you're just a background source. You know, it's off the record sourcing. It's all the same. But publicists do it as well, and they do it strategically. And that's what we talked about on this episode, how blind gossip is used as a PR strategy tool. So if you want to check out that episode, it's 267. It's also in the show notes. But we also talking about uh, Joe Jonas, Sophie Turner. I mean, that's really where where Kyle and I really went off. Uh, but we talked about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and Britney Spears. And, and, and we talked about the NFL, you know, how they were brought in, you know, because – Kyle gets so much backdoor information. You know, like I look at the amount of information that I get behind the scenes in my DMs. So when you're a known blind gossip creator, oh my gosh, forget about it. I'm definitely having Kelsey, uh, Kyle back in Kelsey, ugh, uh, Kyle back in 2024 because, well, not only did we have so much fun, but I want to explore deeper, you know, this idea of blind gossip, true, not true, and what is going on there. All right, everyone, those are the top five, five episodes of 2023 and what you can expect in 2024. So again, you're going to start hearing changes in production. I have a new producer on, changes in promotion. I'm going to be promoting the show. Also, I'm going to be highlighting one you know, weekly story, but also doing my little news dumps uh, for the week. And I definitely want you to check out my Patreon. It's PR Confidential with Molly McPherson. So it's an exclusive online space for your questions, my answers about PR, crisis comms, cultural PR, all of it. I have three tiers. One that's for the kind of the TikTok junkie, if you will. It's pop culture PR. I have lives, live chats. I usually start on TikTok live and then the live chat comes on over to Patreon. And I have a mid-tier for PR professionals or aspiring PR professionals. I put a lot of my information that I'm doing with clients. I mean, protecting their, uh, you know, their privacy and being confident and, and also fully confidential uh, with their, with their uh, information. But any lessons learned, the poll that I can pull out, I will put it in that tier. And then also my professional tier, if you sign up for an annual 
uh, membership, you can have monthly consulting with me. I kicked that off uh, just last week. I had two calls back to back. And uh, if you sign up for that annual, you get a link and you can schedule a monthly call with me. So if you're dealing with an emerging issue or an ongoing issue, um, or if you want to just chat com or PR, definitely uh, check out uh, the Patreon uh, account, uh, PR Confidential with Molly McPherson, and go to that annual membership in the professional tier. All right, everyone, that's all for this week on the podcast. Welcome to 2024. I'm so excited for this year. I'm excited for this podcast, excited for things that I have coming and doing. And just, you know what? Life is great right now. I got a lot of great things going on professionally, personally, and I want to share them all with you. So thank you so much for being a part of this journey, whether you have just joined me today or this year, or if you're one of my OGs going all the way back, I thank you so much for listening. That's all I have for now. So bye for now, and we'll see you in the next episode.